Today's lesson is 13-4, which is volume of right rectangular prisms. So the first thing we want you to do is we want you to watch the con video. It's volume of a rectangular prism. When you do that, after you do that, then I want you to make sure that your homework is written in your planner. And um, when you finish watching the video, I want you to write down this vocabulary. So a right rectangular prism is a three-dimensional figure with the congruent bases and right angles between the bases and the sides. So if you would take a look at this picture down here, this is a right rectangular prism. Now, I don't, I don't know why they call it a right rectangular prism because rectangulars, all, rectangul rectangles all have uh, right angles. So you really could just say rectangular prism right rectangular prism is a little redundant if you ask me so anyways right rectangular prism three-dimensional figure with congruent bases and right angles between the bases and the sides a volume the volume is the amount of space inside a three-dimensional figure volume is measured in cubic units um, such as units cubed or inches cubed or feet cubed or whatever, what have you. So you, you can say units cubed or you can say cubed units. It's either way is fine. The volume of a right rectangular prism is related to its dimensions, the length, the width, and the height. And the formula for volume is length times width times height. This is the formula for the volume of a rectangular prism. So make sure you have your vocabulary written down and you know the formula. You must memorize it. That's an easy one. So here we want to describe the difference between the two rectangular prisms. Now, you okay, this is uh, one inch by one inch. So you know that, that this shape here, the base, is a square. Okay. Now, of course, a square can be a rectangle, but not all rectangles can be squares. This is a special rectangle, okay? A square is a special rectangle. Um, and then here, because the dimensions are different, you can see this is a rectangle. So the first one is a perfect cube. This is called a cube because the measurements are all the same. A cube is made of six uh, equal square faces and the volume is side times side times side, okay? We say side times side times side because they're all the same. So we, you could even say, look, see, this would be the length, this would be the width, and this would be the height. See, they're all the same. So that's the reason why we would we say side by side, by, uh, side times side times side, or side cube, okay? The second one is a rectangular prism because the measurements are different. A rectangular prism is made of six rectangle faces and the volume is length times width times height. And again, here is the length. Here is the width. And here is the height. Okay? So for example, 1A, we want to find the volume of a rectangular prism, okay? So here is the figure. And again, just like we, we've done in the past, we, the first thing we want to write is our formula. So our formula is volume is equal to length times width times height. Now, please notice, you see how I did not use the x for my multiplication because I'm using all variables. We don't want to put an X in there. We're going to use the dot for multiplication. You could also use the parentheses, okay? So um, we want length. So here's the length. There's our length. The width. There's our width. And here is the height, okay? Now, um, we're going to write. Now we substitute in. The length is 5 and 1 fourth times the width, which is 3, times the height, which is 3. 
Okay. So now, you guys, um, there's there's one thing I wanted to talk about here. Um, you can use fractions here, or you can use decimals. I'm going to use fractions, but I just want to point it out to you that we know that one fourth, one fourth, and the decimal is zero point two five, right? So if you wanted to, you could put 0 0.25 in here and then do your multiplication. But I'm going to keep it as a fraction just so we can practice our fractions, okay? So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to multiply, to simplify. So here I'm going to change the mixed number to an improper fraction. So remember, in this direction we multiply, in this direction we add, just, just a little review. So that's going to be 20 plus 1, that's 21 fourths. 21 fourths. And then we're going to multiply times 3 over 1, times 3 over 1. Okay? So here, we're going to go ahead and multiply. Um, and we cannot simplify anything here before we multiply, so we're just going to multiply straight across. So here we've got uh, 3 times 3, which is 9, and then 9 times 21 is 189, over 4 times 1 times 1, that's 4. Now we want to change the improper fraction back to a mixed number. So. We divide 189 divided by 4, so that goes in 47 times, so 47, and then um, just, I know, I know that we know that this is 1 fourth, but we're just going to do this, so, uh, so 47 times 4 is 188, so 189 minus 188, that means we have one left over, so this is going to be 47 and 1 fourth. And then don't forget, we need to put our units in there, so this is going to be centimeters cubed. Alright, so go ahead and pause the video and do example 1b on your own. This is find the volume of the rectangular prism. All right, so here is your solution. So again, you guys, remember, first thing we do is write our formula. Then we substitute, and then we simplify, okay? So we have length times width times height. We substitute in, and when we multiply, we get 65.79 centimeters cubed. Good. All right, example 2A is volume of a right rectangular prism. It says a drawer of a jewelry box has the dimensions shown. What is the volume of the drawer? So again, you're just going to um, write your formula. Volume, oops. Volume is equal to length times width times height. And then you're going to substitute in. So here, um, let's, this is our length, here's the width, and here's the height. Now I do also want to mention that since this is all multiplication, it does not matter, um, it does not matter what order you multiply it, okay? Um, but if I ask you for the length, or if I ask you for the width, or if I ask you for the height, you need to know which one of the dimensions are, what the dimensions are. So now we substitute. So we've got 15.1 for the length times the width, which is 5.5, times the height, which is 3. And now we simplify. So we've got 15.1 times 5.5, times 3, which gives us 249.15. So 
in fifteen hundredths, and our units are inches. Two. Okay, very good. So now I want you to do example two B. I want you to pause the video and try this one on your own. All right. So it says a packing box is in the shape of a cube with sides that are one half yard long. What is the volume of the packing box? Now, remember, this is a cube. So that means that all of the sides are the same. Okay? So that means the length, the width, and the height are all half a yard. Okay? So we're going to write our formula. We substitute in one half for each one of those, and then we multiply straight across. So 1 times 1 times 1 is 1, and 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. So we get 1 8 yard cube. Alright, so for example 3a, we want to find the missing dimension. It says, find the height of a right rectangular prism with a volume of one point, I mean 126 cubic inches a width of seven and seven eighths inches and a length of two inches. So this one, finding the missing dimension, we're trying to find the height. Okay, we want to find the height. So the rest of the important information is that um, we have a volume of 126 cubic inches. We have a width of seven eighths, I mean seven and seven eighths inches, and we have a length we have a length of two inches. So we're going to write our formula. Volume is equal to length times width times height. Okay? So now we want to substitute what we know into our formula. So we've got a volume of 126. So now we substitute. So we have a volume of 126 cubic inches. So that volume goes in here. So this is 126 here is equal to the width is 7 and 7 eighths. Now, Oh, and the length is two. So I'm gonna put I'm gonna put the length in here two times the width. Now this is seven and seven eighths. Now we already did one with the with fractions. So I'm gonna show you that you can change this to a decimal um, just by dividing seven divided by eight. Okay, so here seven eighths, and you already know that that you can divide, and we get 0.875. So I'm going to go ahead and change this to 7.875, okay? So the width is 7.875 times the height, and that's what we're looking for. There's our question mark, right? So that's what we're looking for. So now we are going to use our inverse operations to solve this problem. So the first thing I want to do is simplify. So we're going to multiply 7.875 times 2. That's going to give me 15.75H. So this is going to be 126. Oops. 126 is equal to 15.75 H. So now we can use our cover up, covering up the H. That means we want to get rid of the 15.75. So that is what we're going to divide by. So we divide by 15.75 on both sides. And here, those 15.75 cancels to 1. 1 times h is h. 
And then when we do our division, 126 divided by 15.75, that gives us 8. So the height is 8 inches. Now, remember, you're solving for the height, okay? You're not solving for the volume, so it's not going to be Q. We're solving for the height, which is just the dimension, so there's going to be no exponent here for the inches. It's just going to be 8 inches. Now, you see how we changed the 7 eighths to a decimal, okay? We could do that because 7 divided by 8 is a terminating decimal. If it was like 7 and 2 thirds, for example, and I divided 2 divided by 3, you can see, oh look, it's a repeating decimal. If you get a repeating decimal, you cannot change it to a decimal. You have to use the, dec uh, the, uh, the fraction, okay? So I just wanted to remind you of that. So pause the video and do example 3B on your own. Okay, so here's your solution. So it says the prism, prism shown has a volume of 140 cubic yards. What is the width of the prism? So first, writing my formula. Volume is equal to length times width times height. We've got 140 cubic yards. So that's the volume goes in for V, 140. Then we got to look at our picture. We've got the length. We've got the height. And we're solving for the width, the W. So I substitute 8 in for L and 3 and a half. And up here, I went ahead, because I know that 1 half is equal to 0.5, I went ahead and substituted 3.5 in for the height. Now, when I simplify, of course, the first thing I did was I multiplied 8 and 3.5, and that's how I got the 28. And then we're going to use our inverse operations, dividing by 28 on both sides, and the width is equal to 5 yards. Okay. So example 4A is to apply what you know. It says Ben wants to buy enough potting, potting soil to fill three window boxes. Okay, he wants to fill three window boxes. And those window boxes are 42 and a half inches long, eight and uh, 25 hundredths inches wide, and 6.64 inches high, okay? So we've got uh, length, we've got width, and we've got height, okay? It says here, if one bag of potting soil contains enough soil to Fill, so one bag will fill a 1, 1,728 inches cubed. We want to know how many bags should he buy, okay? So the first thing we want to do is uh, find the volume of each of those, of one of those boxes. And of course, because we're, um, we, we want to do three window boxes, we want to multiply by 3, okay? So, volume is equal to length times width times height. Now we substitute in. So we've got 42.5. The width is 8.25. And the height is 6.64. And now we can simplify um, by using our calculator. So that's going to be 42.5 times 8.25 times 6.64. And that's equal to 2,000. 328.15 inches cubed. So this is 
28.15 inches cubed. Okay, now just as a reminder, this is for one box. We want three. So we want to take this number and we want to multiply that, this times three. I'll just write it down here. So times three, and when I multiply that times three, that's going to give us 6,984, 6,984 point four five inches. So this is for all three window boxes. Okay, so this is how much soil in volume that we need. Now, we need to know how many bags do we have to buy? Well, one bag can, can fill 1,728 uh, inches cubed uh, of potting soil. So what we need to do is we need to take this number now and we want to divide that by 1,700 28. Okay, so I'm going to come up here and write my answer up here. Okay, so do that division. So we're going to divide by 1728 equals, and that's going to give us 4.041927, blah, 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 blah. So we can round that 4.04. Well, let's just write. 4.04 um, bags. Now, that really stinks for this guy because 0 0.04 is just a teeny amount, right? So, how many bags does he need to buy to fill this? Unfortunately, he's going to need five bags. He's going to have some leftovers. <laughs> so, this is your final answer for example 4a five bags of potting soil okay so <clears throat> i would like for you to press pause and i would like for you to do uh, example 4b on your own and then watch for your solution all right so it says the storage cube that has an edge length of 16 centimeters is being packed in a cardboard box with a length of 28 centimeters. It says um, a width of 18 centimeters and a height of 22 centimeters. The extra space is being filled with packing peanuts. The packing peanuts cost 0 0.002 cents per cubic centimeters. Now, I just want to let you know that that is not a typo, okay? That is not a typo. So that's just saying it costs less than a penny per cubic centimeter, okay? Which makes sense because it's not really that, that big. And, and, and it's very uh, packing peanuts. Um, and we want to know how much will it cost to fill the extra space with the packing peanuts. Now, I do want to let you know that this one, I... I I took a picture, I mean, I drew a picture, I drew a diagram just so I could keep myself straight, okay? So, here's my picture, and so we have a, a, um, a storage cube, that's the thing in blue. It said it has an edge length of 16 centimeters, so there's the 16 centimeters, okay? And remember, it's a cube, so all of the sides are the same, okay? Then it says we've got... Um, a length, we've got a length of 28 centimeters, there's 28 centimeters, we've got a width of 18 centimeters right there, and we've got a height of 22. There's the height of 22, okay? So, We want to know once we put that storage box in a storage cube in this packing box in this cardboard box we want to know how much peanuts how many peanut packing peanuts do we need to fill this extra space here in green okay 
So the first thing I want to do is we want to know what is the volume of the, uh, the packing box, okay? Okay, so we want to know the volume of the, that's this cardboard box. So the volume of the box is length times width times height. We've got 28 times 18 times 22, and that's going to give us 11,088 centimeters cubed, okay? So that's the whole thing. Now, then we want to find the volume, uh, how much space does the, the cube take up? Okay, so here, volume of the cube, length times width times height, they're all the same, 16. So 16 times 16 times 16 gives us 4,096 centimeters. Now, we want to know what is the leftover space? What is the volume of the leftover space? So if I'm looking for the leftovers, then of course we're going to subtract. So the leftover space, we're going to take the volume of the large box and subtract the volume of the cube. So once we do that, we get 6,992 centimeters cubed. This here in blue is the volume of the leftover space. That's where we want to put the uh, packing peanuts. So how much is it going to cost? Well, the packing peanuts cost 0 0.002 cents per cubic centimeter. So we're going to take that volume and multiply it times 0 0.002, and we get 13.984. And of course, in money, 13.984 is $13.98. And that's it.